Ahoy there, YouTube! I am so excited to be with you today for today's Kickstarter critique of the Rune Lords board game. And uh, this one I'm really excited to check out because I saw randomly, I think it was on Facebook, someone in the, like, the board game group said, oh, tomorrow the Rune Lords board game is coming out and then another game and it's going to be a huge day for Kickstarter. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm just going to immediately book that one for tomorrow's thing. And, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> and... It 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 is also the other big one was Castles of Mad King Ludwig, which wow, and it launched right before it. So that right there is a gut punch that you don't really think about a lot of the time as a consumer. But if someone really really big launches right before you, it's like you know there's a there's a Kickstarter spotlight. Everybody's looking at Kickstarter for the day, and you know if something bigger than you launches at the same time, it's like dang. Uh, so yeah, a hex based skirmish board game for one to four players based in the world of the Blank. Now, I know this is based off of a book, I do believe. Uh, so $7,677 pledge, 30 days to go. A hex-based skirmish board game for one to four players based in the world of the best-selling fantasy series, The Rune Lords, by David Farland. So the first thing I would recommend here is, and this is like something that, that I see a lot of people not do, is somehow, oh no, manage to squeeze into your beginning thing that this is based off of a book. Because when I hear it's based off of a book, and I hear that it's a board game, you know, normally when I look at a board game, I assume the mechanisms are going to be the strong part of the game, and then the, the story is going to be kind of lacking. Because most board game designers are more into the, the actual creation of the game than the theme. Most. But when I see that it's based off of a book, it's like, oh, okay, so the story's on lockdown. It, it's more about if the mechanisms can hold up. So that gets me excited, and I would personally consider putting that there, uh, that it's based off of a best-selling book series. Because right now I have to click on it to figure that out. All right, so one to four players, 45 to 180 minutes. Back during the first 40 hours to receive a free legendary card foil back. For cards, will also be available as $5 on. Uh, that I will say, I, I want to mention that, that looks really small when you're, when you're looking at it uh, from the last window. When there's all the other games next to you, you might want to bump that up just a little bit uh, in size, perhaps, because it was hard to read it. If you want people to actually read it from that screen, I would at least. But let's check out the video. Minute 49. Sovereignty stage. Players draw from a deck that will provide the influence needed to build an army. Perch okay, okay. So what I normally say is, I don't particularly like Kickstarter videos when they go too in-depth in the rules. But, that's also different if you can pique my interest before you get into it. And in this particular instance, despite the fact, yes, I realize at surface value this is a, a very generic sounding game. Like, oh, there's big bad monsters... You are a special fantasy person and you're going to rise up and fight them. But the way they presented that in that first 15 to 30 seconds of this video, I think, at least for me personally, really piqued my interest into knowing more about this world and now being interested in the said uh, gameplay and how exactly, you know, the sausage gets made. So I am really digging the video right now. Just much needed equipment and navigate dangerous encounters along the way. But war always comes. Oh, oh, hit me with the minis. Okay, I like that. It was a nice, subtle transition. I had an idea. I had an inkling that there might be some minis in this game uh, when I look when I first looked at the main image. But now you revealed it. I like that. Was a good reveal. Combat. The recruits purchase. Okay, so we have minis and standees and little uh, little uh, the little hexagonies. And I really am digging in the map. Like, it, it kind of, like, this is a great angle. Like, whoever did this video, hats off. Like, uh, like it looks, it just looks cool. It has a toy factor, a game factor, and I'm excited to see more. 
just in the sovereignty stage, are sent into battle alongside their room lord. Load out your forces with a quick... Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's what I want my player aid card to look like. That's what I want my board to look like. Clean and crisp and clear and a spot for everything. It looks solid. I love the look of this. Like, this is... Too many games, too many games have that space, and they do not utilize it well enough, in my personal opinion. And that tells me that, okay, they know what the heck they're doing there. From your armory to give them the edge in battle, recruits are drawn and played from ahead, adding additional abilities to the reinforcement recruits that have a physical presence on the battlefield. With multiple game modes, the Room Lord's board game. Oh, ho, ho, four players skirmish. Oh, head to head. Oh, I like it. Give me another one. Sovereignty optional. What? Deck builder? <laughs> what? Uh, um, I would maybe highlight that. I hope you highlight that more. Because that is, that was a crinkle in this I was not expecting. I was thinking, you know, maybe Mage Wars-esque. I love that game where you're, you know, going around and you have your different characters doing different things. <laughs> but then you just throw in the optional deck builder. What? Your people need a hero. Will you answer the call? Coming soon to Kickstarter. Okay. I thought that was a really well done video. Top notch. Good stuff. So, 178 backers, 30 days to go. Las Vegas, Nevada. Two created, 16 back. I can't say word Nevada. So, what do we got? What was the first created? Okay, Ru oh, it's a relaunch. All right. Relaunch. So, yeah, this is what I was talking about. You know, maybe, maybe I'm just getting old. You know, but I, I don't think it looks bad. Maybe I put the price up here. Might put the price up there. Let's see what the old one. See if this is the same video. That's what I'm always interested in. Did you top up the video? Okay. It looks to be roughly the same. Oh, a hundred thousand dollar goal. That's uh, that's a big difference. That's a big first ask. It's <laughs> your first time game. That's a pretty big ask. Hundred k. Wooey. That's some Simon money. Uh, the Rune Lords board game. The Rune Lords is a hex-based skirmish board game for one to four players based. You know what? So I always try to think after watching the video, what do I want right now? The three things Kickstarter always needs to do is, uh, do I want it? How much is it going to cost? And when are you going to get it to me? So I want to know how much it's going to cost because that video is so good. Just uh, My wallet is ready. Open it up. I want to pay you. All right. So hopefully you get to that. Looking good. Looks good. Dicebreaker, you got some quotes. I always like to look at the quotes. See how, how see how good they are, because I'm bad at quotes. I'm bad at giving quotes. I need to work on it. Rune Lords combines smooth flowing gameplay with some crunchy tactical death with an elegance many other games struggle to manage. What the hell does that mean? Rune Lords combines smooth flowing gameplay with some crunchy tactical These just sound like buzzwords. <laughs> they just sound like bad words to me. Let me know in the comments below what you think, if that's a good quote or not. I personally, I don't like that quote. You don't need to be a grizzled veteran of tabletop wargaming to learn how to play. That's that's good. I actually do like that quote a good deal. Because uh, I wasn't even thinking about people potentially thinking this is going to be a really heavy war game. Because you know what? I play games like Mage Wars, which are very heavy. <laughs> you know, Learning those rules, it takes a good deal. Because there's so many exceptions. Uh, so I think that's a great quote. The Battlecast. I played this a few times. It's an absolute blast. It's a fair price game from a cool universe with a lot of unique gameplay. Great quote. Why back now? When also the game comes out to retail, the target set MRP will be $59. Wow, that, that sounds... I, I like that price point. I like that price point. And somehow you've tricked my brain into accepting that price point. You know, despite the fact there's probably not going to be that many miniatures. Because there's the... It, it's, I feel... Oh... I like it. Take advantage of group pledges and multi-wave shipping so you can Regin Productions as big dreams. Just show me the cost. Show me the cost. Why back now? You told me why to back now. No, hit me with the pace. Hit me with the price because I don't, I, I feel like you should not ever have to go over to this side to get the price. It should be somewhere seamlessly uh, weaved into the beginning of this area. 
and I, hopefully it comes soon. At its core, the rune loads is a card-driven hex base, quick overview, actions. This is all good. This is all great stuff to have, and I like... Wow, that looks really good. This is all great stuff to have. Oh, wow. That is... That is... So, whoa. Holy. Let me back that up. I want to I wanna bask in the... How big is that? Look at that. That is out of this world. Hats off. Hats off whoever did that. That is so spectacular. I want to see more of that. Uh, but I, I want to see the price first. You know, this is spectacular stuff to have, but hit me with the price. Battle dice. Battle dice by tier. This is great. This is great. I've already sold on the game. Like, you sold me. The, you did so well on the video. I just want to pay. I do want to check out the rule booklet. This guide is a work in progress. Whatevs. Uh, PDF. Because I always like to see, just for personal... Oh, it's one of the oh, it's one of those um, it's one of the ones where you're gonna go like this. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. Set up. Hmm. Lots of. Is the rules? It's it's a lot shorter than I was expecting it. So this is this is an adventure book. No, this is an adventure book. This isn't the rules. I thought I was clicking on the rules. Oh, I clicked. This guide is a work in pro what? Demo adventure book. The room loads board game. Oh, I clicked on the adventure book. Okay, so this is what this is what I'm looking for. Oh, lots of meaty stuff. We're going to guess, what, 30-something pages? 47 pages. Wowie Maui. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I don't like this rule book. This rule booklet is, uh... It looks like an absolute beast to go through. That's a, that's a first red flag for me right there, personally. Like, if I clicked on this rule booklet, like, it just doesn't look like it's a fun read. Sometimes when I see some of these big Kickstarter rule booklets... And it's like, it's so seamlessly, and it transitions from one to the next, and it's so well done with pictures and illustrations and examples and tips and good stuff like that. And this just looks like, just like, ah, uh, like, I'm, I'm already reading 20 pages, and i just like, here's 20, page 21, where I'm just, oh, it's just, yeah, I, uh, I would, I would recommend maybe putting a lot of polish on this rule booklet. Because I think, with a game like this, because this is, you're, you're trying to get me to back a very uh, time-consuming game in the aspect of it's probably going to take me a good deal of time to learn this game, to set this game up, to play this game, uh, you know, to play the first, maybe play the first game wrong, and then we realize the second time, oh, we're playing this wrong, uh, and then maybe, like, the third time, you really start to pick it up. But with a game like that, that's not the kind of game that you ever want to put back on the shelf and then forget about it, because when you want to come back to that style game... It's just like, like, it's the reason why I don't play Mage Wars now. Because I don't want to have to relearn all those rules. And that's because I remember the Mage Wars rule book was not my favorite. And this one does not look like a game that I would want to visit the rules. Or revisit the rules. It just, it doesn't pop. Now granted, uh, this guy is a work in progress. Okay, cool. Um, what? I, 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 that's weird. Because this is also clickable. Either way... So I'm not uh, so good. It's a work in progress. Strike that one from the record. Strike it from the record. But I'm so glad you put that there. And a lot of people wouldn't put that there. So good on you. Join the game designers for the quick overview of combat basics. And I, you know what? I would even reach out to the people. Reach out to your backers right now and say, Hey, we've been working very hard and diligently on the core structure of the rule book. The absolute important meat and potatoes of the rule book and if anyone has the time and be interested would you be willing to maybe give us some feedback about how you think uh, would be some good ideas to make the rule booklet the most user friendly you know what i'm saying like would this be a good spot for a picture would this be a good spot for an example would maybe this particular section flow a little bit better over here or over there because you have uh i'm gonna guess a couple hundred people hundred people Maybe say say one percent of those people are interested in helping me out. You might have one or two people right there. That's that's huge. Uh, so yeah, I would totally reach out. Click here to play the Rune Lords demo on Tabletop Simulator. Love it, love it, love it, love it. What's this? Combat Basics. Oh, this is, this is all great. This is all great stuff to have, but you still haven't hit me with the price. Solo co-op adventures. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, 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 yes. Um. Yeah, I'm glad you're spotlighting this. I might... So here's the thing. I might even potentially spotlight this above some other things. I might consider putting it up there. Because 
This is just my own personal spitballing perspective, so let me know what you think about this in the comments below. This particular take would be very interesting. Uh, with a game like this, if the video really wows me and I see a good price, you know, it sounds like it's going to be a good price, probably in the 40 to $70 range, which I think is reasonable, uh, very reasonable. At that point, I'm just like, back. I want to back it. Uh, you know, this looks like a great game for me to play with my friends, who Adam, who loves Mage Wars, or, or you know, uh, we used to play uh, some other head-to-head -head skirmish games. This looks like a spectacular time. I absolutely love it. Or I love the books, and I'm interested in it. It looks great. They're going to back. But the people who are not going to back are the people who are said, okay, so you say you have a one-to-four player mode. I'm here to see the solo mode. Because there's a huge chunk of gamers who are just there for solo. They love solo. So... Joe Schmo, me, playing it with my buddy Adam from Game Night and Lucy, I'm all in. Love it. Love the idea. Instabat. But the solo gamer, I need to know what, what you're doing different solo here. Is this an afterthought? Demo adventure overview. So yeah, you're going over the solo stuff. Love it. It's super fun to try out new combinations for your Rune Lord recruits. One-stop co-op shop. I'm going to guess that's assuming about the solo slash co-op. That's a great quote. Love it. It's super fun to try out new combinations because that's why games like King of Tokyo uh, just don't die. They will never die because it's so much fun to just try out different combinations. And I say I think that is one-stop co-op shop. Awesome quote. Four action-packed adventures. The Unrighteous King. Oh, this is great. This is all about the solo. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I would. I would. Uh, this is all solo co-op. I would. I would. Whew, I would put this a little bit higher potentially. Like that's that's awesome. Adventure book. The Unrighteous King demo. What is this? What is this? There's so much. There's so much here. Um, I like it. Wow. Rune Lord seamlessly blends elements of RPGs, deck building, tactical combat, and rolls together in an epic gaming experience. And now, with a streamlined gameplay, this is one to keep an eye on. Mark Strait, the editor books. All the changes they have made are improvements. Everything is faster, cleaner, and simpler. That makes the game better than it was before, and I was pretty high on the first version. Okay. Oh. So you came back and you streamlined this for the first version as well. Wow. Okay. I don't know what I think about that. That's really interesting. Because I could see both perspectives. Someone would say, oh, wow. They were about ready to rush into this with, with a game that, you know, they took they took some time off and improved the game drastically. Like, that worries me a little bit. But at the same time, I might be of the, the mindset where it's like, oh, wow, that's awesome. This game was already good, and now they just polished it even more. They figured out, you know, things that might have come in the second edition. So I could, I could see people, you know, glass half full, glass half empty kind of thing. Uh, I personally look at it more as a pro, I think. But I'd be interested to see what other people do. Sovereignty. What is this? The Sovereignty Stage is an optional game mode where players can take the armies. Is this the deck building? To a resource management deck building. Yeah, okay. I, I, I would mention here so uh, deck building. Also, what in the heck? So we have cooperative, we have solo, we have head-to-head, -head, we have <laughs> deck building. <laughs> like, um, I don't know. Once again, that gets me excited to try different game modes, but I could also see the flip side of people saying, oh yeah, you remember those 56 and 1 Atari games? Those were the best, huh? More game modes. <laughs> I could totally see other people saying that as well. So, But I personally am a glass half full kind of person. But whatevs phases of around this could look cleaner uh that could look i don't know the sovereignty stage is very innovative bringing is very innovative bringing so much more strategy than a typical skirmish i i would I maybe have videos just i would i would have a video somewhere in here that just is a quick hitter like a one minute type of thing where it's like hey here's the different game modes so you could try in this uh and maybe you know i think they did maybe they did that in the video as well maybe i've forgotten about that just because there's so much that I've taken in because there's so much and I still don't know the price. I don't think it's coming. Why the deck? Because here's what I would personally recommend. Wherever the price is, and you hopefully have uh, the oh so delicious pictures where it's like, here's what you get with this pledge level, and it's just a nice clean picture and it has the price point and it says, oh, it includes all the Kickstarter stretch goals and all that good stuff. That, wherever that is, because it is way too far down in my personal opinion, needs to be whoosh, but way, 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 way higher because I already had my wallet open. I had my wallet open. I was ready. Just take the money. Then, if I could, and if then you know somebody wants to know more, they want to dig into the weeds. Let them dig into the weeds, but give them the flower first. Why the deck builder? Though it's optional, the deck builder mode allows players to create countless new combos by mixing the rune lords. See that? That sounds really cool to me. That sounds so cool. And this is this is the game mode. Okay, good. If I was really interested in this, totally would watch it. Great. 
excellent. And I tell this to people all the time because so many times I see board games and they don't just have a simple video like this. Like, it doesn't have to be that impressive. Just set it, like, <laughs> I swear, when I first started shooting these videos, I used to prop my phone up against whatever. I remember there, I still have a picture of one where I figured out that I could prop my phone really well with a hot dog bun. And I propped it up against a hot dog bun. And I would have hot dog buns in my room because they worked great until I realized, oh, hey, I can get a tripod. I'm a big boy YouTuber now. Um, but... Yes, just anything like this, because if I'm interested in this and you have it and you're upfront about it, I get excited and maybe I watch it and I'm more invested in the game. So I love what they're doing. I think they're doing a lot of great things with the Kickstarter here. Core Components, Rune Lords. Great. Uh, yeah, this is great. Uh, this, this, I feel like this should be higher. I feel like this should definitely be higher, like going exactly what's into everything. Yeah. You know, where would you put the components in the rule booklet? You don't put them all the way, uh, you know, halfway through the page. Because, yeah, look, look over here, halfway. I would totally bump this a little bit higher as well. Because I'm assuming there's a good price point because you don't have the minis. And like, look, I, I want these cards. These are great cards. There's just tall cards. I love those tall cards. There's lots of text in the cards. I know it's by an author. I know it's going to be good text. I know these are going to be engrossing stories I'm going to have with the Dire Wolf pack. But what's the price? Maker's token dice. Cool. Tokens. Chits. Nothing blows my pants off. Looks good enough. Battlefields. Great. This is awesome. That's big. Excellent. Create battlefields, the mines. Yeah, hopefully they got flip sides. Great. Looks great. Stretch goals. This is awesome. This is all good stuff. I would totally put all this stuff way higher. Way higher. Get me excited. You know, like I said, I was ready to back, and I still don't know the price. I still don't see the price. Stretch goals, $55,000. Locked. Uh, set fire to the battlefield. No remorse. What is this? Oh, a new rule one. Wow, a new mini. That's that's a that's a banging first stretch goal. I always say that. That's what you need to have. Your first stretch goal, I feel like you should reveal it, and it should be a banger, and this is a banger. A new new freaking character. Yes. Yes, 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 but put it higher. Put it higher, I say. More exciting stretch goals. $100,000. So you're going with the bigger stretch goals uh, instead of the micro stretch goals. I personally am a bigger fan of the micro stretch goals. They just get, I feel like they get people more invested. You know what I'm talking about? Where it's like, oh, 55, then 60, then 65, then 70. Now, I realize it can be very difficult to do because it's like, well, I don't, we don't know what, what we're going to get all these stretch goals for. Like, what, what stretch goals are we actually going to add that are going to get people excited? Uh, but I feel like these big stretch goals, like, they may look cool, but if, if you're not, if you're, if you're, which, because it looks like you got a little bit stuck at the, the starting line here for whatever reason. Um, it's going to be hard to get to those, I would say. Which stinks. Because the game looks really cool. Custom hex bases. Yeah, this is great. I love these custom hex bases. That's a banger. I'd say that's a banger. Two bangers. Deluxe Pledge. What is this? It includes all stretch goals and all applicable add-ons. More details to be announced. Okay. So the super mega ultra version of the game. A.K.A. Uh, the Whale. What you want everybody to get interesting i kind of like this route right here and i kind of don't i definitely am trying to see both perspectives here and i love it because it, it shows me that okay you're you're aware of how much of how much of a pinch you can get into uh if you over promise and under perform like <laughs> there's been companies that have gone out of business because of one reason or the other, they, they just mismanaged a Kickstarter with something like that. Components, like weight, weight of shipment wasn't what they thought it was going to be, and it, it just sinks entire companies. Gets people fired. I will tell you this. I do a lot of interviews with a lot of people uh, from different board game companies, and they, they they don't stay at the companies for very long. Not maybe, And it might not be because of their performance, but just because the, the games don't sell, you know? You make a couple flops, and you're in a lot of trouble as a board game company because there's not huge amounts of money being made on this. So this tells me this is a practical decision, and I don't have an issue with it, but I definitely see the flip side of people being like, what? You're locking the whale? I want the whale. Okay, I'll come back in the last 48 hours, and if you have too many of those people and not enough of those people who are willing to commit early on, it could be a problem. I hope that's not what happens here, but... 150k that's a lot to get the whale but i still know the price add-ons i know the price of add-ons before i know the price of the game come on <laughs> come on i couldn't have missed it could i i've been looking for it 15 dollars corset rune lord miniatures pack uh normally it's not a great idea to bring too much attention to your rune lord cool awesome five dollar metal first player token legendary foil pack oh that looks good man 
graphic design. I will tell you, that is not your issue in any way, shape, or form. It is just absolutely popping. Spectacular. Uh, that looks good. Those pop. Those, unfortunately, are the stretch goal ones, right? So those are the stretch goal ones I see right there. Is it? Uh, you know, I don't know. Lore. Hit. Uh, so we got to get the price in here. You got to get the price. I feel like it should. So I got to go over here. You made me go over here. Five dollars. War banner pledge. Demo print and play. Cool. P yeah. Post game pledge manager. Simple enough. Like it. Nineteen people. Easy. Always good to have. Forty nine dollars. Very happy with that price. Very happy with that price for, for the amount of game I feel like I'm getting in here. I know some people will make an argument about the amount of components you're getting in here, <clears throat> but but for the amount of game, and I, I don't even feel like that's a good complaint. I think this is just a good, very solid price point. That being said, you got to have the whale here. Oh, it is there. What? Oh, this is the shopkeeper. You got to have the whale. So this is the first time I think I've ever seen uh, a Kickstarter, the, the 70 plus that I've done, where someone has locked the whale. And said, oh, we can unlock the whale. And I just think that you got to unleash the whale, baby. you got to unleash the whale. I, I, and if, you know, because... And this is such a hard Kickstarter to read. Because as I mentioned, probably a little bit too much, you know, Castles of Mad King Ludwig launched before them. By, by probably hours, minutes, who the heck knows? Uh, and that just, whoosh, $300,000 funded in three minutes. You know, and then... I back this, I spend the $70, $80 I just spend there, and am I going to keep browsing Kickstarter? I'm going to be like, nope, I'm done with Kickstarter. I'll tell my significant other that I spent the money and they'll be excited to play the game. But, you know, there's a big difference between if I go upstairs and I tell my wife, hey, I bought this game. And she'd be like, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. And if I say, oh, I backed two of these. And it's like, uh, well, you just, <laughs> you know, it, so I feel like that is, that is unfortunate. What is this? This is cool. Looks cool. Lore. Great. Yes, what is Rune Lord? I've been yes, I don't know what is Rune Lord. I feel like this should also be higher as well because I was my my intrigue was really piqued by the fact that it was based off of the book series and you this is like the first time that I've really even seen anything mentioned about it. I don't know. Uh videos, wow. Videos. There there's just so much stuff on here and it's all great. I just feel like the positioning of it is a little odd. Mark Street from the Dice Tower goes into the uh I would you know, and this is just personal preference based on actually it's not even my personal preference i personally don't care because i don't watch either of them normally uh but i would put the dice tower preview over just about everything else because you know look i mean dice tower two hundred sixty six thousand subscribers i mean it just it makes smart sense in my personal opinion and i'm gonna actually play a substantial bit more money for that particular video so if you're paying that video i would highlight that video as well because people know mark people like mark mark lost a lot of weight which was awesome for me kept it off good for you mark uh but yeah so we got videos this is great one stop co-op shop they did the uh, the quote from earlier should you play lots of videos lots of videos okay board game half lots of stuff here board game designers shipping what is it twenty dollars ouch ow that's a oh god just nab it yeah so what are we looking at sixty nine dollar game $69. I, I now slightly have slightly more issue with the price of the game. Um, just because we go back to the miniatures factor. You know, if this were a miniatures game, I, I, I feel like I could swallow a little bit more. But knowing it's mostly just cardboard, you know, but then ah, that's $20 shipping. That is just, that is, that is rough. Like, what size is this box? You know, because you can get, it, 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 so it won't fit in a medium rate envelope i want to see an actual picture of the box and that's another thing <clears throat> i personally feel like there should absolutely be a picture of the pledge levels like like what the box is going to look like because have we seen the box i want to see the box i want to see the size of the box what is the size of this box will it fit on my shelf is it going to be the fact that i have okay there we go so there's the, this is the size of the box i feel like that should totally have a pledge level somewhere it does not does not have the price okay so it's a big box. It's a big box. Strike it from the record. $69. Good. But the fact that I thought about it, the fact that I even thought about it, maybe says maybe I, I feel like you need the picture saying $49. You're getting this big box. $20 shipping, so it's going to be $69. Maybe you just say $69 ships to the United States. Or I, 
when I see the size of the box, the $69 becomes much more stomachable, I do believe. So I personally, I, I, I just keep saying I personally, but put the dang uh, price there with a picture of how big that box is. So I'm like, okay, yeah, this picture, that picture right there. Maybe even, you know, this is what uh, Fallen Lands, uh, a great game uh, that I really love, uh, did. They actually showed you how big the box was going to be, and they like put it into a shelf like a digital shelf to say, this is how much space it's going to take on a typical Calyx. Put it next to other games to give me scope of how big this box is and how big of an experience you're going to be offering to me. If you got a big old box like that, I might promote it. I think I'd promote that a little bit more. All right, what do we got? What do we got? We have so much, so much. Shipping, it's fine. In-depth, our team, good stuff. Unlocking the whale. Whew. Locking the whale up. That is such an intriguing decision to make. How does the five dollar reward work? Yeah, we got it. Well, well, minis add on looks good. First day, don't expect any updates yet, unless they did something crazy. Hi, is Vats included the maximum shipping estimate for EU members? Yes. Very active, looking good, looking good. Get it popping, great. Let's see if there's anything. Thanks a lot for the pod. I'm very pleased with the information. I'm very happy to read. I wish there would be Reavers in the game. I always love the Starship Troopers vibe, mankind fighting giant bugs aspect of the lore slash books. Also, no Nomen, Dooskin, Toth, Froth Giants, the Days, Farron, and Waits. Missing out on a ton of lore there. The game itself looks good so far, but I don't feel the Rune Lords vibe in it. Only the endowment system. The rest feels too generic. Wish you the best of luck in this journey. Ooh. Ow. Ow. That, that comment. I mean, there's no... There's no getting away from that comment. Like, that's a die-hard fan of the game saying, eh, feels a little themeless. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that stinks. Let's see what the, let's see what the bounce back is, because that's a hard bounce back. And that's from a super backer, too. Thanks for the comment. They are all in the game. Reavers are an unlock. The, whoa, whoa, whoa! Yes! Coming on back, baby! Reavers are, are in Unlock. The game takes place before Book 1, so they aren't on the surface yet, so we plan on expanding into Book 1 after the core game has been released. <laughs> Mwah! Absolutely masterful. They just smashed a 100-mile-an-hour 100 100 ball at you. We're doing a tennis analogy here, and you just backhanded that right back at them. That was beautiful. Because you said, oh, they're actually in there, friend, and here's why you know based on the lore like i'm so into the lore that you know he just kind of one up you you just one upped him on the lore almost a little bit which i think in this instance is good to go because when i because uh, when i see someone that passionate about a project i think that's great uh so it looks good whoa uh if you make your wind up already that's fair too we have a q a with david farland planned with glory hound on february 3rd oh that's spectacular that's great that's the kind of thing in the middle of the stream because that's what in two weeks uh, where people are going to get interested. Awesome. Great, great, great. Uh, so, I always say zero, one, or two. Zero. Keep scrolling. One, back it for a dollar, come back in the last 40 hours, and two, back it for the whale, and you have taken away my ability to give you a two. So I'm going to go with a one, because the game looks really cool. Like, the game looks spectacular. I'm excited to see what comes of this game. Uh, but the Kickstarter itself is some interesting choices. Very interesting choices. Uh, but yeah, still, 9,000. So it is on the path to being made. And I think I think, I think, think one is solid here because I imagine if they can get to that $150,000, this could be a snowball. It's just, I feel like they're trying to hit that. Every Kickstarter is trying to hit that snowball. They're trying to get that push off the hill so that it's just whew, kind of steamrolls and you start getting the buzz and you start getting higher and higher and higher and higher on the chart. Um, and it feels like some of the Kickstarter decisions here might've just made it so they were pushing from, you know, further down on the hill. So they just have to push a little bit higher, but I feel like if they can get that snowball off and get people excited and, and just get down to business in this beginning part, Hey, here's the price. Here's, you know, $69 gets to the United States of America. It's a huge box. Check out this big box. Yeah. Like, Oh, this is it. Oh, what? Oh my God. I did miss it. No, I missed it. Everything. Oh my gosh. I'm a noob. Oh, no. Oh, beginners. Well, that's how did I miss that? Well, that's been today's Kickstarter critique. I take back most of what I just said there. That's exactly what I wanted. Uh, 
Yeah, and as always, thanks for your time, you two. Holy guacamole, how did I miss that? What? Oh!